Hello again everybody and welcome to the channel. Now in this video I'm going to run through pretty much everything that I use when I'm out gigging. There might be one or two things that I've, I've not included in the video but most of, of the things that I would pack up and take with me to a gig are included in this video. So we'll run through through everything step by step and then at the end of the video I'll show you how I connect it all together. So it might be a bit of a long-winded one, maybe grab yourself a brew so you can relax whilst you're watching me run through <laughs> all of this stuff um right so obviously we're starting with the rc600 i will leave a link in in the description below to pretty much everything the, that we talk about here so the rc600 is on the top row or i should say the top tier of this um new x or nux bumblebee large bumblebee pedal board so the reason that it's on the top tier is because it won't fit on the bottom tier which is here it's a little bit too wide. There are a few people who have put like little spaces to just widen each of these sides, which absolutely makes sense. If you're happy having it on the bottom tier, you could do that. The re another reason I, I should say I like it on the top tier is because it's kind of like it's, it's better for me when I'm when I'm pushing on the pedals. It's a little bit a little bit more raised. And another reason is I can access all of these ins and outs, whereas if it's on the bottom tier you would have to sort of go rummaging and digging through the back. So for me, it's a bit more practical. So we've got the RC on top of a New X large bumblebee pedal board. Underneath that is a GAFC foot switch, which is connected to my Boss um, amplifier, which I'll talk about in a minute. Underneath this, we've got the bottom row now. Well, this is the bottom row as well, but it's just these are a bit further forward. This is uh, my FS7 foot switch that does various things. This is my Sonic ABY um, selector switch so that I can go between um, an A and a B. So I can plug in one guitar and I can plug in another guitar, another guitar. I can switch which guitar I want to use. And then here I've got my Polytune Mini 3. Um, and that's pretty much, it, pretty much it on the on the pedal board, everybody. The reason that I've left this sort of void here is just because it's easy for me to sort of pick and choose um, which sounds that I'm using on my katana. Um, it's not ideal. I, I probably would, thinking about this, if I was to have more pedals, I'd probably have this separate and have it to the side. But there's a few things that I'm going to rejig at some point anyway. You can see I've got a little M Audio expression pedal behind there. I just thought I'd include that, but I always have that to the side anyway when I'm, when I'm gigging. Um, yeah, and then at the back, we've got some various connections. I've got. Uh, I always use like to use some good quality cables. So there's a Fender one, um, which I'd always leave hooked up. And I'm talk. I'll talk about my connections later, but it's always plugged in. Or oh, sorry, coming out of my. There it is the Polytune Mini Three, and then I just wrap it up and keep it all together. And then I've got my GAFC um, controller that's obviously connected to the back of the the GAFC, and then the other end I plug into the amp power supply. And then obviously the expression pedal. There is a bag that comes with this new X pedal board, and that is over here. It's actually a pretty good quality bag. You've got yeah, uh -huh. you've got a nice area at the front to keep sort of any spare cables, like I do, in there. Um, it's quite pad well padded, sort of yeah, inside, and it keeps everything safe. That's the main thing, isn't it? I suppose I do like to keep everything in there that is currently hooked up to to this so all of this gubbins sits on the top and then that all goes into my into my bag let's move across you can see i've got my boss katana 100 mark 2 amp and there's the panel there's the top panel there so what i do with this is i run well i'll talk like i say i'll talk about my connections later but basically i run out of my rc into the front of the amp and then at the back let's see if i can see i've got like a bit more focus I use a send and return there to go back in to the um, RC. So that's pretty much the amp that I use. I use that to um, turn on and off all the different tones and effects that I want. So I don't really use guitar effects in here. I will talk about the effects that I use in there later, but I use my guitar effects from the Boss Katana. Underneath this, I have got a gravity uh, microphone, sorry, microphone stand, I should say. And this bag, by the way, is, is obviously made by the same company, but I purchased this separately and it's a great bag to keep the mic stand in. 
can't remember the exact model of this mic stand, but I will leave it a link in the description below. I've tried Hercules ones, I've tried other ones, and this is, for me, the best. Really well made, robust, nice so sort of soft touch um, knobs when you're setting up and packing away. Over here I've got a selection of other instrument cables, so the, these sort of gold colour ones are the ones that I use for my guitars. And then behind that I've got some other Fender ones as well. These are Fender Deluxe, I think, these ones. These are the Fender ones um, run into my, into my desk from the RC. Then I've got some uh, in an in-ear monitor system. So this is um, a Lakato uh, wireless in-ear monitor system. And you can see that it's really small. It's actually really affordable and it works perfectly. I've just got the receiver there because the transmitter is, if I just go back over here, the transmitter is sort of like, there you go. So it's just on uh, a strip just to connect. It's not Velcro, it's like a better quality. I'll talk about that later. Um, and it just sits on the on the pedal board all, all the time. And then I obviously clip this to wherever, on my belt buckle or whatever. And then I've got these fantastic, these are really affordable as well. So these are the CCA, CRA headphones or earphones, I should say, for my, uh, for my wireless monitor system. Really good. And then next to that, you can see I've got this weird thing. You probably don't even know what it is unless I pull it up. So it's like a little tray table. And I can connect that to my uh, microphone stand. There you go. I can put a couple of picks on the uh, on the front, just make sure my finger is there. I can put a drink, water, or beer, if you like me, in there as well. So I'll, I'll set all this up after. I've got some minor shakers, loud, medium, and the soft. I've got a G7 Company Capo, short SM58, which is the main vocal mic. And this bad boy over here is my minor pickup Cajon. Uh, which sounds great. It's actually got um, a, like a piezo pickup built in so you run out of there into in what well, I do in the RC and I just sort of leave my volume and tone at 12 o'clock and I make my adjustments in the RC that way. You see I've got a couple of guitars over there next to that clothes maiden. Um, one on the right, not going to get it out but it's a Gibson SG standard. The one on the left is a Takamini G series. Pretty old that Takamini now. I'm actually looking at getting a uh, something a little bit more practical and small. So I'm thinking, leave, in, leave a comment below if you think I, sh I should get something different. But I'm thinking of a Taylor GS Mini Ecoa Plus as a mouthful for you. Um, then we've got this fairly old Mackie DF-X12 mixing desk. So everything sort of goes into here. Um, and then if I'm going into front of the house, I will come out of there. But I can always use my own um, Mackie SRM350. So I've got a pair of those. Just put one out on the chair for you to see there. They're all right. I mean, like I say, this is pretty old system these days. So um, always looking for something new to buy. You know, we like as musicians, we always want to upgrade. So leave me some feedback. Leave me some comments if you think I should get anything in particular. And then I've got um, like a dual, really cheap stag guitar stand. So I can pop both guitars on and then an iPad there um, at the front. So you can see. That's pretty much everything. So should we all should we set it all up? Yeah, I think so. And just like that, the room is transformed. So I've not plugged everything into the back of the RC because I want to talk to you about how I connect everything together. Um, I know most of us know how to plug things in, so I'm gonna just glance over how to plug something in into the mains because I'm sure we all know how to do that. Um, and also into the actual desk, but I'll tell you what what each of those cables are doing. So we've got the gravity mic stand there. You can see I've got my little shakers and my capo on the little tray table. SM58 XLR running down. And then we'll just go and grab that XLR and plug that into, well, for me, I'm plugging it into mic one. So that just goes in like so. So we've got the mic in there. Um, next up, we're gonna go um, from, in fact, what we'll do is we'll run through these instruments over here. So let's imagine I'm using two guitars. What I would do is I would have my guitar cable. So this is coming straight out of my guitar and it's going into my ABY switcher. And that's gone into A, which is technically the red one. So I know whichever guitar I'm using here, the other end obviously would be connected. Where are we? Over there somewhere? 
the other end will be connected to, connected to my guitar. And when I want to switch to a, a different guitar, I would press this and that would be my other cable. But we're only just going to have one cable, so. Um, I'll just talk you through how everything is actually connected with the guitars. So we run into the guitars this way. Obviously, I select which one I'm using. It comes out of this into the tuner. So I could have my tuner on, depending on which guitar I've selected, I'll be able to tune that guitar. And then that cable, you just about see it underneath. It's like um, one of those um, quality Fender cables. And then that will run into the front of my amp, which I haven't plugged in yet. So let's do that now. So this is basically coming out of my tuner and that's running into the front of the amp where the preamp section of the amplifier is. Um, and you're probably thinking, how well, how does that link to the RC? Well, what we do is we use, I'm just going to go to the back, we're going to use this area here, which is the effects loop. I've got a little bit of black tape, that's my send. So that goes to the instrument in on my RC. This is my return, that will go to my output of the RC. So we come back over here. And we found my send and return cables, which are in amongst this mess. So I know that the black tape one is my in, so we're going to go into the input. Let's just make sure we're doing this right. Instrument one input. And my return goes to, I've actually set it up so it goes to sub output one. So now my guitar amp, my guitars are going into the front of the amp, the effects loop at the back is the send going into the front of the, oh sorry, instrument in on the RC. The return goes back to the uh, return on the back of the effects loop so that I can hear my guitar signal after I've run it through the RC. I can hear it back coming through the amp. But I also want that signal to come out of my PA. So what I then do is I use the line out. You can see I've got a little uh, line out option, sorry if it's losing focus, there we go. Line out option, and then that runs into my desk, and I know it's this one here, channel number three. So this channel is going to control the level of my guitar volume coming through my Mackie speakers. I'll talk about the other things in a minute. Uh, one other thing to talk about with the amplifier is, as we talked about earlier, my GAFC foot switch here has to connect, so that runs down this little thin cable, and then that runs into the GAFC input in the back of the katana to allow me to change between my tone settings or my channels on the amp. So that's pretty much everything with respect to the guitar. So we run into here, run into the tuner, come out of the tuner into the front of the amp, send and return, send goes to instrument one in, output two I've set, sub output, two, sorry, sub output one, I've set to go to the return and then we go out the line out into the desk and then that's way that way we can get our signal guitar sound coming through my speakers so there we go that's the guitar uh, everything else is pretty pretty much straightforward so we've got my minor pickup cajon which is down here again i run to, from the output of the cajon that doesn't have to go through any anything too detailed that literally just going to run where are we? Over here. I've set this to be instrument two. Uh, where are we? Instrument two. And it's a mono signal, so we're going to go left. So there we go. So I've got my guitar and now my, my cajon. That's all set up, ready to go. What I also like to make sure is my cajon has its own output, because if you've watched my other video on this, you know that my cajon is just uh, track six. So I've set my cajon, I'll talk about the, the settings in the next video, but I'll set my cajon so that the signal goes into instrument two and it goes out of sub output two straight into the desk. And also track six goes to sub output two. So I know that my cajon sound will always go out via this cable here, which is sub out two left. And then that runs into channel number two on my desk. The reason I've not used channel one, everybody, is because I might use this for other things like some, um, some playing some music, you know, not using the tape, that is. So I might put some Bluetooth, uh, I've got like a little Bluetooth connection that goes in there. Um, so yeah, channel two is my cajon, channel three is my guitar. So again, knowing that the way that I've set things up on the katana, tracks one, 
two and five on my guitar signal. Nothing else comes through the, to that. And obviously when I'm playing live, and then just track six comes through here. So let's go back over to the RC. We're nearly there, I think. We've got our main outputs now. So I've got a bit of yellow tape for the left so that I know I can go into the left and right, which is there and there. So the way that I've set things up with the mains is my vocal microphone, any percussion that I put down using the vocal mic will go to the mains as will um, my rhythm track. If I start the rhythm, that also goes through to the mains. So things like percussion and stuff that I use there to, to, to be mic'd up, sorry, using through the microphone will also go through the mains. So I've taped them both together just because I'm always going to use those two cables together and you can see I've got my yellow tape for the left and then I've panned them left and right so when we hear the signal come through that one will come through the left speaker and that one will come through the right speaker um, and that's pretty much everything really to talk about regarding how things are connected to the desk so cajon guitar left and right from the mains Occasionally I might stick some reverb on depending on the room that I'm playing in so I can use a bit of reverb um, to send the, the reverb from this effect to this to this controller and obviously I'll try and put everything to unity where possible and then we've got the expression pedal which we've not talked about so obviously my little M audio expression pedal sometimes that will control the loop volume sometimes it will actually control a few different things that I've set up in the assigns. This actually goes to expression two, which is there. That's the way that I've rigged it up. Uh, I also have a couple of cables here, which I'll just plug in as well. You can see I've got two ready to go. They always stay under there, everybody. The first one is my FS7. Just trying to do this. There we go. That goes into control one. And the second one, where are we? Goes into my headphones. I'll just try and do this. It's not easy to do one hand. But it goes into my headphones. There we go. Get it in there. Because that's my in-ear monitor system, which we talked about earlier on. So that is it, everybody. That's how it looks like an absolute mess, doesn't it, when you think about it? But that's how I like to connect things. One thing I didn't talk about was my little wireless MIDI connection, which isn't plugged in at the moment. But it just means that when I go on to Songbook Pro, let's see if I can do this super quick. There we go. Go on to Songbook Pro. I can send depending on which, which song I've selected here, I can send a MIDI information over to the RC so that I get my, the right memory selected. That's what I tend to use my, my, MIDI, um, my wireless MIDI connection for more than anything else. You've probably noticed I've got a few things. This is something new that I'm trying out actually. Um, so say, let's say I've got with or without you here. In fact, let, let's choose a different one. Let's choose uh, watermelon sugar, right. So what I've done is I've got some little color coded um, parts to help me know when to when to press a certain pedal or when to record. So you see there, record, rhythm, guitar, cajon, shaker, bass, vocals. That's the order that I'm gonna put that record sequence in and it'll, it'll come in. I'll do that after I've sang the first verse and chorus. And then you've got a little red rhythm highlight, highlighted area there. That's when I'm bringing bring the rhythm in. Uh, what else have we got over here? Um, it's a little bit different on this, on this one because I've just changed the orientation of the page, but it just tells me when to use expressions, when to use these little blue, white, and green stickers. Muscle memory will eventually kick in when I've played the song enough. But, uh, but yeah, that is all the connections, everybody. In the next video, I will talk about how I've set everything up within the RC to make all of this work. So stay tuned. Ta-ta.